Can this bowl really become an ecosystem that supports life? Let's give it a shot. I have kept and still keep aquatic setups of many kinds, but this is the first time I make one without a filter. For the substrate, I'll be going with a classic, Fluval Stratum. I begin by pouring in a decent amount of substrate to give the plants a nice nutritious layer to grow their roots into. I then smooth it out to make it more even. To cap it off I'm using a fine grained aquarium sand. A cheaper alternative to aquarium sand is play sand. I repeat the same process here, I pour it in and even it out a bit. Here's an assortment of random rocks from outside and some spiderwood twigs. These will be the hardscape. I always begin by randomly placing one of the bigger rocks and from there I try different layouts. Once the roots are in, I continue on to the spiderwood. I try to place the twigs so that they resemble root systems coming out between the rocks. As is, the hardscape can easily fall apart as I start planting, and the spiderwood will definitely float if I fill the bowl with water. Therefore, I will glue them together using liquid superglue that is safe for both plants and any animal life. First, I place a bit of paper towel between the two hardscape elements. The glue will then react with the paper and make a rock solid bond. To cover up the unsightly paper, I pour some sand over it while the glue is still wet. I then repeat the process wherever I find it necessary. It looks decent so far, but it isn't perfect, and I'm not really convinced. To give the foreground a more natural look, I sprinkle aquarium gravel across the sand. This gives it a more textured look as well. Definitely an improvement, am I right? As you can see here, I added a larger piece of spiderwood off camera. I decided I wanted something that breaks the surface so that I can have a couple of plants growing out of the water too. Now, finally time for plants. This is a type of Bucephalandra, an epiphytic plant native to Southeast Asia. I will also be using a couple of plants and mosses grown in vitro. I start by filling the bowl up just enough to plant the bottom without struggle. Okay, fine. This is Liliopsis brasiliensis. If my research is correct, it will grow a nice grassy carpet along the bottom. I've read that it benefits from added CO2, but I'm still hopeful it can grow in here too. I cut it at the bottom, where the grass-like tufts are connected. This flame moss will be glued onto rocks and branches to help it stick to where I want it to grow. And this spiky moss will be added the same way. By laying all of the plants out on a paper towel, I can make sure they don't dry out by spraying them regularly. When planting into the substrate, tweezers are my favorite tool. I push the plants well down into the sand so that they can quickly find the aqua soil. The Bucephalandra, being an epiphyte, can grow without touching soil. Here I superglue it to stick it to the spiderwood. They can also be squeezed into cracks and crevices without the need of gluing them down. This one may break the surface and grow immersed in the future.
Most of the moss was put in using superglue as well. Over time it will stick on its own as it grows. I'm taking water from another tank that is absolutely full of microscopic life. This will help kickstart the ecosystem. I also take some floating plants from the same aquarium to add to the bowl. They will help tremendously in taking up excess nutrients into their own root systems. You know what else would help? You hitting the subscribe button and liking this video. You're far too kind. Thank you. This grass-like plant will be planted with the root straight into the water. First we need to remove as much soil as possible to not contaminate the water later. The easiest way to do that is to just rinse it out. Time to put them in. The first one can just be squeezed in between the glass and the emerging spiderwood branch. The other ones will need some super glue to be held in place. As you can see, the spiderwood is already releasing tannins into the water, giving it that brown tint. Because of an oversight on my part, this is now around one month later. The light I thought I ordered from a local electronics shop has now arrived from China. Let's just assemble it real quick. As you can see, the Liliopsis is rooted really well into the aquasol and has even managed to spread a bit and some snails found their way in with the floating plants. This one didn't want to be on camera though. Not just snails though, but tiny worms and crustaceans too. I mean come on, just look at that cute face. I wonder what this fight is all about. I decided the snails need a leader, so this is an elephant snail. What should we name it? Leave a comment with your best suggestion. I really enjoyed making this, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as well. Please like and subscribe, and maybe leave a comment as well, that would help me a lot. Thank you, and don't miss my next video.